First of all, I want to say thank you for being here. You are four incredibly brave women, and you're my heroes. You have been willing to put yourselves out there to address something that many people want you to stop talking. They want to prevent you from talking. Don't listen to them. Make sure that you continue to use your voice to educate us, to educate the American people, because these children are worth saving. Dr. Bowens, I want to thank you for being here. And in your testimony, you referenced what I think is one of the more important points in this debate, and that children are treated as special and vulnerable, a vulnerable class in the psychological and research fields. You referenced the experience of Tuske at Tuskegee. And to me, the important takeaway here is that controversial so-called healthcare practices, treatments, and experience have not always withstood the, the test of time. Outside of your reference, I think of how lobotomy was once a form of care we wouldn't even consider today, and in fact has been banned in countries throughout the world. In this debate, I have wanted to replace the misleading terminology, gender-affirming care, especially as it relates to children, because one, it replaces the biological reality of sex, and two, because it falsely suggests that using the term affirming that there is anything good going on here. There are only two sexes, boys or girls, or boys are boys, yet girls are girls, and one cannot become the other. In fact, and especially when it comes to children, it seems to me that gender-affirming care is better described as sexual lobotomy. It is treatment that is fundamentally and, per that fundamentally and permanently alters the sexuality and medical and sex psychological well-being of these patients. It causes irreversible sterilization and serious long-term medical complications and long-term reliance on pharmaceuticals. These treatments and surgeries are controversial medical practices that seek to change a person in a manner which is not actually achievable, and they will not withstand the test of time. Dr. Bowens, are there medical professionals in the U.S. and abroad already rejecting these surgeries as any form of serious medical care? Yes, thank you for your question. Or your question. And um, we are seeing an increase of medical professionals speaking out. Just this past week, there were 21 doctors that came out and said, we, we are very concerned about this. The own um, AAP, uh, American Academy of Pediatrics, was referenced earlier, and 80% of their membership has been asking for a review of the literature, and they've been denied that review by the upper echelon. So there are, and I've listed many other countries, there are people who are, are standing up because they're seeing the harms done to these kids like Chloe Cole. Um, can you discuss why referring to these treatments as life-saving treatment is so extremely misleading? Yeah, it's, it's misleading for a number of reasons because, for one, the whole impetus of the scientific method is that we're, we're discovering things. We're supposed to be in a process of, is this the right approach or not? And this whole discussion about uh, saying that it's life-saving automatically says there's no room for discussion, there's no room for scientific inquiry because the science is settled, which is... It, it's an amazing statement because the suicide literature has been around far longer than the transgender um, uh, literature, and and the suicide literature is not conclusive. So, so we have a, a real right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing in this case. It seems to me what we've been living through for the last couple of years is a government that wants to suppress any type of speech that it disagrees with, and we're seeing that with the industrial censorship co complex that we've been talking about. Um, and it seems, it, it appears that that's exactly what's going on here. They want to stop the debate because they know that they can't win it. Dr. Bowens, my last question is, is what is the success rate of sex change operations? Well, we have, uh, it, it's hard to find longer term data with uh, um, children, but what the data that we do have, which is probably the most reliable data point available is from a Swedish study and it looked at uh, over 10 years, which is really important because regret doesn't just happen a year after um, some sort of transition. And what you see is a suicide rate that's associated with 19 times higher than the general population. 
Well, actually, there is a zero uh, 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 percent, there's a 100 percent failure rate for sex change operations, isn't there? Because it's not possible to change your sex. That's right. A hundred percent failure rate for these procedures. That's right. You can change your sex. Thank you. And I yield back. Thank you. The gentlelady yields back.